Hi guys and welcome to today's video where I'll be going through five top tips to make a happy, safe and enriched environment for your leopard gecko. Because after all, it's one thing for a reptile to survive, but it's another for it to thrive. Now before we begin today's video, I am very happy to announce that today's video is sponsored by Amino. I have worked with Amino before and personally I use their app all the time. It's an app that has millions of different sub-communities within it. Each dedicated to their own personal interests. For example, my favourite amino would be the leopard gecko community. I really like that there are quizzes to test your knowledge on leopard geckos, instant replies from the community if you have a query about your gecko, and lots of polls and chat rooms to take part in to connect with thousands of other gecko lovers from around the world. Now I'm actually going to be doing a quiz of my own on this particular amino all about leopard gecko morphs. So to participate in a quiz on the leopard gecko amino just click the link in the description or the pinned comment and follow the prompts to download amino for free on ios or android and uh, you can actually download amino by searching your app store then searching leopard geckos once you're in you can find me on there by searching my username leopard gecko talk so thank you to amino for sponsoring today's video but now back to the video. So firstly, I wanted to give you an example of a very poor setup. One that has no enrichment, no heating control, and one hide. Now, I'm not going to say this person's name or their channel because frankly, I don't want any drama. I don't want to gain views off of their name. But this is the person who's put out a video which has showed a prime example of what not to do when setting up a leopard gecko's tank. Now, thankfully, most of you guys know how terrible this is. I don't have to explain why, but it is quite troubling that so many people still think this is acceptable so in today's video I wanted to show you what you can do to create a lovely enriched environment it's not going to require tons of money by any means but it can make a whole difference to your leopard gecko's life so number one is provide more than one hide leopard geckos need at least two hides but ideally three a warm cold and moist hide it's important a leopard gecko can thermoregulate if it wishes to warm up, it can take cover in a hide. If it wishes to cool down, it would like to do the same on the cool side. And the moist hide will allow it to have access to more humidity that may allow an easier and more successful shed. Tip number two is use a thermostat. Now, I will admit for the first few years of owning leopard geckos, I had these heat mats where the max temperature was 30 to 32 degrees Celsius, which is ideal for a leopard gecko. They'd go off at night. So I thought they did the job pretty well. However, I don't know if this is just down to that particular brand or just the power behind the heat mat, but that's kind of an exception because in most cases, it is best to use a thermostat. For example, the size up from the heat mat I was using, it was only a little bit bigger, but without a thermostat, it would go up to 60 degrees Celsius. So as you can understand, it is important to use a thermostat. Yes, sometimes a thermostat can be a little bit pricey, but it's essential for controlling the temperature of a heat source and ensuring it doesn't overheat and burn your reptiles. Tip number three, make sure there's a day-night cycle. So I'm quite fortunate that I have this very large window in my room which allows tons of natural daylight to illuminate it. However, if you feel that your room that the gecko is in just isn't really getting enough light that it can distinguish day from night, then you can use an LED or a UV light throughout the day to mimic daytime. At night, it is good for them to get periods of darkness. However, in my experience, I have found that Say like my geckos are in my bedroom, if I'm up here and I turn on my room light or I have my TV on, it doesn't seem to really disturb them too much and it may be down to age. I think if you have a new gecko or a baby gecko, they may be more shy, they may hide away if you have the room light on, but in the years I've had my geckos, I think they've just come accustomed to it. Number four, if you are using a UV light, make sure it's a correct one for your reptile and that it's fitted correctly. Now, as I've said before, UVB and UVA are very beneficial to our leopard geckos. However, if you choose to use a UV light, it's important that you install it correctly, you install it at a safe distance, and it's a correct percentage for your gecko. For example, I use a Shade Dweller, which is 7% UVB. This requires ideally 10 to 12 inches distance 
from the lamp to the gecko's head at basking. Unregulated, unbranded UV lamps can be very dangerous to use and lights fitted incorrectly can cause burns and eye damage. So it is important before you install equipment like this that you fully understand how to install it correctly. I will leave a link to a site where you can figure out what you need for your leopard gecko and the height of your tank. Tip number five is experiment with textures in the tank. So of course there are some things to avoid like those heat rocks that you plug in or calcium sand and wood chips and things like that. But when building a leopard gecko's tank, feel free to include cork and slate and rock, um, a coconut flower. This is what this thing's called. I've seen them used a lot in arid tanks. Uh, you can also use earth mix arid if you're in the US. I've heard the bio dude does some safe substrates for leopard geckos. If you don't want to use loose substrate then still you know use your slate or tile but also add different textures so your gecko has different things to interact with climb on um just come into contact with since using real rock and cork i've actually found my geckos will actively use it whilst shedding which is really cool to see and it has helped a lot so yeah feel free to really enrich their environment with different things that they may come into contact with in the wild so I hope this video has helped. I may have more tips in the future, but I thought I'd be kind of concise today and just whittle it down to five in today's video. Once again, make sure you go check out Amino and the quiz that I've made on the Leopard Gecko Amino. I'd love to see how you guys do and I'll leave all the links down below. If you haven't already, please subscribe, but thank you so much for watching and goodbye. <laughs>